They just seem to get better and better, these yeah. Grey Cups. For the second time ever, it goes to overtime. First time in a shootout format. And the Eskimos prevail in a wild win in Vancouver. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to BC Plays. Dave Randolph, Chris Schultz, Matt Dunning, and oh. Jock Climby. Boys, wow. There is so much to talk about with this game. Let's begin by saying that Don Matthews is denied his Grey Cup record sixth victory in the big game. But he said it was very entertaining, classic CFL style. But he also said this will be one of his most painful losses he's ever had you endure. The other side, jubilation. We'll begin by breaking it down by throwing it to TSN's Farhan Lalji, who was in the winner's locker room. In what was easily one of the most exciting finishes in Grey Cup history, the Edmonton Eskimos have won the rubber match. It's their second Grey Cup championship in the last three years, the first Grey Cup to be decided in overtime since 1961. Oh, I'm just cherishing a moment right now. You know, all said and done, we won the rubber match, and we say who we got the better team for the year. It was an unbelievable game. I mean... Gosh, was it exciting, and, uh, you know, I, I felt good all, all day long today. I felt that we went out and played our game. Uh, the Grey Cup was ours, and, and even when they came back, I, I felt like we were going to go down there and make the plays to win it. Never been in a game this thrilling, and, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. You know, it's, it's probably the defining moment or the, the tale of our season because we fought hard all season, and uh, the guys in this locker room never quit. In each of their last two playoff games, Danny Machocha chose to make a quarterback change. This time in the second half, with Ricky Ray struggling to finish drives, he instead chose to show confidence in his starting quarterback. The guy was doing great. The guy was doing great. It's not his problem that, you know, uh, there's a protection breakdown up front and he gets stripped of the ball. That could be any quarterback, and that can happen to him. But I just looked at him and I said, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. He says, I know I will. And normally he's not a guy that says anything. He says, I know I will. I know I will. And that was enough for me. You got to stick with a guy. Um, you know, if you believe a guy can get it done, um, you, you got to leave him out there and let him play. Throughout these playoffs, every major decision Danny Machocha has made has turned out to be the right one. From quarterback changes to third down gambles, he has stood in the face of his critics and becomes the seventh rookie head coach to win a Grey Cup. He's always had a, a, a pulse of this team in his four years that he's been here. Now you can't call me a rookie anymore. <laughs> Prior to this game, Tony Tompkins guaranteed that he would score a touchdown on a return. With his team being outscored 17-3 to in the third quarter, Tompkins not only set a CFL record with his 96-yard return, but also changed the momentum of the game. We needed a big play at the time, man, and um, the guys came together. We had, to, we had to get it all together, man, and we did that. Ironically, Machocha feels that his winning a Grey Cup might do more for football in the province of Quebec than if the Owls had won it. He is the first ever Quebec-born head coach to win a Grey Cup, and he hopes that not only opens some doors, but tears down some walls. Farhan Lalji, TSN. Thanks very much, Farhan. We are joined now on set by the Grey Cup champion, head coach of the Eskimos, first-year head coach, and he goes all the way, Danny Machocha. First of all, congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Second that. of all, you know, I know you'd, you'd, you'd like to say something to me, to, to Schultz, to Jock. You saw the predictions on Saturday. You want a chance. Here you go. This is, go no, ahead. I guess all Let I'm us have it. All I'm going to say to Maddie is, you're the man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're the man. Yeah, Came from you the heart. It. You know that. I know that. Yes, I know you that. know that. We, uh, you know. You know where to pick him. There's no question about that. <laughs> Five years spent there. Exactly. I know the de hard determination comes from that organization. Three Absolutely. road wins to make that happen. It's unbelievable. Once an Eskimo, always an Eskimo. <laughs> hey, Danny, let me ask you about this football game because it's going to go down as one of the best Grey Cups ever. And there were so many transitions, so many coaching moments. Was there ever time you felt the game was slipping away, or were you always confident about what was going on, how to adjust, and how to call the perfect play? Well, I thought for the most part in the first half, we played really well. I mean, we were able to dominate them and keep them to a, a single point. And offensively, I thought we were putting drives together, and, you know, and uh, we, we scored a touchdown. We settled for a field goal. But for the most part, I was satisfied with our first half performance. Second half, some strange reason we were trying to turn over the ball they had a short field to work with and you just can't do that with a team as uh, with the weapons uh, that the Montreal Alouettes have. Danny I know that uh, Ricky Ray's answered a lot of critics with his performance tonight and really stepped up but there was a you know you're 27 points in the second half by the Montreal Alouettes you're up 10-1 at one point Ray puts the ball on the ground on the 28 yard line a couple plays later AC goes in for a score they go up 25 20 if there's any time that you're thinking about making a switch was that going through your mind when no. it's 25 20 no not really because uh, I looked over to Ricky and he says you know we're gonna be fine 
He goes, we're going to be fine. All I want to do is have that ball in my hand when, um, when it's time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and um, I looked at uh, Jason. He says, you know, Danny, watch him throw the ball. He says, those are Ricky Ray passes. He says, we haven't seen those uh, as of late. And uh, Ricky was sharp with his reads. And, uh, I mean, the sack, basically, in the fumble, I mean, he got hit off the backside. So any other quarterback, it would have happened the same thing. So you just have to believe in your people. I, had, I think I have a pretty good pulse. Of, of that locker room, and for the most part, I've been pretty fortunate with some of the decisions that I've taken. You talked about your quarterback, Ricky Ray. This is going to be a performance that will go down in Grey Cup history, and I had a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with him following the game. Ricky, in the first two playoff games, uh, you were pulled out of that game and replaced by Jason Moss. Uh, this one, uh, Danny Machocha says, this one is yours to win or lose. How did that feel? Well, I mean, just, just the, the confidence he showed in me. Um, biggest game of the year, and um, to believe in me and in, in that moment. Um, it's just it's just a great feeling i think uh and all the stuff that we've been through as a team and for everybody to just stick together and trust one another uh, just shows what the character we have on on this team as far as teammates and coaches yeah the, the team as a whole has shown a ton of character but uh, i want to ask you how tough it's been for you in the last several weeks there's been a lot of critics out there and it's been intensified here in the postseason yeah you know um you know to play play 17 games in a row every every snap and then you know the last regular season game and um, you know, then the two playoff games previously, um, to, to have to see a lot of, I guess, negative things, um, you know, whether I couldn't get it done or, or Jason should be starting and, and all those things. And, uh, you know, I just tried to, tried to believe in myself, have confidence in myself, and then go out there and just play my game, and I knew it would work out in the end. So it's vindication? Well, I mean, a little bit, uh, you know, to go out there and... and to play well and, and give your your team a chance to win is, is always your ultimate goal and um, for everybody to stick together and, and show confidence and trust in me uh, just makes it that much more special congratulations your second great cup man it's a great feeling and uh, i feel so lucky to to you know even be in one and win one but to, to win two is just is something special see you next season yeah thank you and guys, uh, he made no bones about it. He was very emotional. He said, yeah, it's, it's been tough. And uh, I think he just reestablished himself as the quarterback for the Edmonton Eskimos. Yeah, I would certainly think so. And, 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 and that's great news for the Eskimos because they didn't want to go into an offseason of controversy. And I think there would have been, had Moss gone in with a couple of minutes to go in the game and had won the cup for Edmonton, where do you go in the offseason now because you can't keep both of them? Danny Machocha, uh, incredible uh, gamble that he, I think he made keeping uh, Ray in the game. Well, uh, you know, it wasn't fabricated heat that was put on Ricky Ray, though. He hadn't thrown a touchdown pass in seven games. And to me, there is warrants a lot of attention as to making the moves that Danny Machocha did so well down the stretch. So in my opinion, guys, hey, he had to overcome a lot of things, but it was brought on by the lack of production. But he did produce for the Eskimos, and he withstood the test, and he rose above it. Three years in the CFL, two Grey Cups, and you know that kind of speaks for itself right there, Schultz. You know who Ricky Ray reminded me of so classic in this football game was exactly what he did in the 2003 game. He, hang, he hung in there until the last possible moment, and instead of making those great big huge plays in that game, he made a whole bunch of series of first down plays. I think it was magnificent standing in there taking the hits to make the play. There's a lot to talk about from this game, but the dominant story leading up to the Grey Cup Classic was the uh, quarterback situation for the Edmonton Eskimos. And when we come back in this uh, edition of TSN Sports Center, Michael Whalen will have a closer look at the whole Moss Ray subplot. Ricky Ray, the 2005 Grey Cup MVP, and with all he's been through in recent weeks, it is vindication for that young quarterback of the Edmonton Eskimos in their thrilling overtime victory over the Alouettes. And welcome back to BC Place in Vancouver. Joined, as always, by Chris Schultz, Matt Dunnigan, Jock Climey. It was the story coming into this football game. When was Moss going to come in? He came in in the Western semifinal. He came in in the Western final. And he was the reason the Eskimos were in this great cup. And he is a major part of their championship victory. How much longer he is an Edmonton Eskimo is up in the air. It was an issue that could have ripped this team apart. But it almost made them stronger. For more on that very intriguing subplot, here is TSN's Michael Whalen. Ricky Ray has a smile on his face for the first time in three weeks. Ricky Ray came through when it counted. One huge play after another when his team needed him most. I don't know what it is about him, but, you know, he's a, he's a really good quarterback. We hit him. We hit him and we hit him and we hit him. 
And you know what? He just kept bouncing up, getting up, getting up. And you know what? He found that three route, and he found that six route twice. He's always been like that, you know? We, we, the last time we played him in uh, 2003, we hit him 18 times out of 35 times, I think, he threw the ball. So he's stuck in there. Although he was pulled in both previous playoff games in favor of backup Jason Moss, Edmonton head coach Danny Machocha stuck with Ray despite bogging down on the scoreboard in the second half. Machocha said he never wavered in Ray's ability to get the job done. You know, it seemed like everywhere I looked, um, you know, there was people saying, you know, I shouldn't be playing or, you know, things like that. And last night I'm sitting in my hotel room and one of the local news anchors says, I don't know if that's a good idea. I think they should be starting Moss. And um, just, just to try and stay positive and for my teammates to always believe in me, for Jason Moss to always believe in me, and um, just to be able to go out there and, and, and play like we did today, just, uh, you know, it was like a cherry on top. We didn't need to know. I mean, we, I didn't need to be told, and um, I just knew my n m number one job today was going to be holding for Sean, and I'm thankful that I did my job in that department, and um, as a field goal unit, we were perfect today. And if there was one throw or one clutch play that captured the essence of this Grey Cup win by the Eskimos, look no further than Ray's third down throw, a 35-yard toss to Darrell Mitchell on Edmonton's last drive in regulation time. That's as great as a throw you're ever going to see. I think that was a perfect tight spiral that just sat up there. And, it, and when Mookie came out of his break, I just said, all he's got to do is catch. He doesn't have to overextend himself. Just catch it. And what a, you know, what a throw. We called a protection that, that gave us a little bit more time. And sure enough, they, they brought pressure. And um, just went through my read and saw that Mookie was matched up one-on-one -on -one with their free safety and tried to just throw it out there and let him make a play, and he did. But what of the future of Jason Moss, Ricky Ray's best friend on this Eskimos team, who's expected to be heading to Hamilton for next season. I don't want to live in limbo, and I'd at least like to know what is being thought. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm in a good situation, let's just put it that way. During the regular season, Ricky Ray set a CFL record for most completions. While he didn't miss a step in this, the biggest game of all, the Grey Cup, he set a new CFL record for most completions in a Grey Cup game. Michael Whalen, TSN. Thanks very much, Michael. Yeah, don't, don't expect the Jason Moss uh, saga to drag on uh, very long. Hamilton and Edmonton will uh, sort it out uh, very quickly, is what I'm told. But Ray overcame and delivered. Well, Dave, you know, you can talk about Jason Moss, but it wasn't about Jason Moss. That was fabricated. This was about a football team overcoming some very keen issues to every football team. And the way that Jason Moss handled himself all season long gave this Edmonton Eskimo football club an opportunity to continue to stay close as a football team and get to this show. Yes, Ricky Ray did grow as a young quarterback and once again he did prove the critics wrong it was seven long hard weeks of him not throwing a touchdown pass but he simply stood up to the challenge given him by jason moss yes he helped out his football team but in my opinion guys this was about the best team winning and overcoming everything possible that they could to get to the promised land and get her done schultz well, when you look at this football team in the offseason they won because they made some great decisions in free agency they brought back Bruce Beaton. Chris Morris had a good game as a offensive tackle. But I really want to give some credit to the receivers because it seemed like if you needed 10 yards, Edmonton got 11. If you needed 15 yards, they got 16. I thought the receivers had great awareness of where those first yardage markers were, and they got one extra yard to maintain ball possession. Couldn't agree more. Fantastic effort by that, by that receiving core and the quarterback, as you said, Matty. Let me just address Montreal briefly. I think that they deserve some credit and, and the way they battled and the gutsy performance they had. You know, folks have to understand, they lost three starters in that football game who were all out by the fourth quarter. Kerry Carey, Lambert, Garrison, the middle linebacker. And, and if they found a way to make it close right at the end with some excellent performances, Anthony Cavillo, I think, played one of his best games yeah. as a pro. Not only throwing the football, but scrambling, buying time. How about Cahoon? How about Strickland? These guys had a fantastic game, and they can be very proud of themselves in the way they performed here. There were tons of great individual performances in this great cup, and I think it was an appropriate uh, finish to what was a very entertaining 2005 yeah. regular season. We saw all kinds of great finishes yep. on Friday nights and whatever other nights, and it was a great season that came to a great close here in Vancouver, and that's it for us for another year of CFL football. On behalf of Jock and Matt and Schultz and Chris Cuthbert and Glenn Suter and our entire CFL on TSN crew will... See you next season. Can't wait for it to start again.
As the Eskimo players and coaches mingle with friends and family <laughs> here on the turf at BC Place, all we can say is, wow, what a finish to the 2005 <laughs> Grey Cup. Nobody thought this except our colleague here, Neil Lumsden, <laughs> that would go into overtime and be one on a Sean Fleming field goal. Smarty pants. Yeah, that's just the way it is. But it was one of those games that everybody will remember. Let's hear from the people involved. It was an unbelievable game. I mean, gosh, was it exciting. And, uh, you know, I, I felt good all, all day long today. I felt that we went out and played our game. Uh, the Great Cup was ours. And, and even when they came back, I, I felt like we were going to go down there and make the plays to win it. What I like about this football team is the character. I mean, that ball ricochets off of Craver and Donnie. And, you, and you, how would, a, you know, another team, how would they have handled that? I don't know. Uh, you know, we come out flat in the second half. Another team wouldn't have been able to handle that. Uh, Marcus Wynn comes in for an injured Marsh. And uh, how other teams would have reacted to that, I don't know. But obviously, we just kept fighting and fighting and believing. We're finally glad that we got this issue settled between the, the Edmonton Eskimos and the Alouettes. You know, we felt deep in our heart, a lot of vets in this locker room felt like they shouldn't, they never should have won that first one. And they did. But, you know, you it's rare that you get a second opportunity, and we did, and we won it. But to get the rubber match, to, to finally settle it, is sweet for us, it's sweet for myself, guys who were here for those three, because now we can honestly say that this Edmonton Eskimo team was truly indeed better than the Montreal Alouettes. We fought hard, uh, but again, I just look back at that first half, and that last uh, opportunity in overtime, it was just too many mistakes that came back to hurt us. Gentlemen, we look back at this game. Eric, 11 points in the first half, but this is the CFL. Get ready. It can go big at any time. You know, look, what we saw tonight was the Canadian Football League at its absolute best. Two outstanding quarterbacks, big plays in special teams. You know, it, it just the, the game at its very best. Anyone that watched this game tonight <laughs> has to be in love with this game. You know what? And Montreal didn't lose. Edmonton won. You know, and for Sean Fleming, we talked about that earlier. For Sean Fleming to not only make the winning field goal, but to kick as well as he did the punting game tonight, much of the game was affected by the position of the Montreal mm -hmm. offense, backed up so deep, gives Sean Fleming a lot of credit, Neil. Yeah, I agree. I, it, it really was a spectacular football game, yeah, and one that we've talked, you know, the ups and downs, the ebbs and flows. I had a chance to talk to a couple of the players, and you go, oh, wow, right? And they're going, <laughs> well, it, it just doesn't get any better uh, to play in a game like this, Rob. Well, when you take a look at, as you said, that ebb and flow, we saw the flow of Ricky Ray, even when it was only 10-1 in the first half. He was composed and in charge of that offense from the first snap. Yeah, and you know what? They, that offensive line for Edmonton did a great job. Yes, and they I, did. You know, I did some unofficial statistics as the game was going on, and the number of pressures, the number of times Montreal brought more than four people, and that was probably 90%. So Ricky Ray didn't have a chance to get the ball deep because of that pressure, but what he did do, and his receivers did, is find openings underneath, and that's why they had such a great, did a great job of possession in the first half. Not a lot of points, but kept the football out of Anthony Cavill's hands, which is a pretty good way to play defense as well. Yeah, and Ricky did a great job of distributing the football. Oh, so many yeah. weapons. We saw Daryl Mookie Mitchell have a big night tonight, but let's give a lot of credit to Danny Machocha. Doesn't he deserve it? Yeah. We've had a lot of coaches over the last few weeks, coaches from the couch, that have questioned whether or not Jason Moss should be the starting quarterback. He was strong. He was decisive in the support of Ricky Ray, and tonight... Ricky Ray came up big time for the Edmonton Eskimos. And the Edmonton Eskimos are celebrating as the 2005 Grey Cup champions. It will be a game that many will remember for years and years. And it's been a pleasure hanging out with Eric Tillman and Neil Lumsden. I'm Rob Falls at BC Place in Vancouver. Thank you, fellas. In the first overtime Grey Cup game since 1961, Joe, just walk us through the emotions that you were feeling, and it, how tense was it as you went to that uh, extra session? Well, you know what? It was it was intense for me as far as the D-line because they were doing so many things as far as getting rid of the ball quick and and just double teaming. I I wasn't able to play a part of it, you know. And anytime you're, you know, you feel like you're a big name player, a big game player, and you're not be a, able to be a part of it, you you, you kind of get down on yourself. You kind of, you know. You just you want to try a little bit harder, but at the same time, you you got to stay controlled. What did this victory say about this club and how hard you guys had to work going through Calgary, going through BC, and now going through Montreal? I tell you what, three road wins in a row is hard for any team. But a team that's been put down all year, who you know everybody's jumped on and off our bandwagon, you know what? 
I'm so proud of our team. I'm so proud of our guys, you know, and and most of all, I'm, I'm proud of, uh, of Chuck Austin, man. He played his heart out today, along with, with everybody else, man. But I guess I'm talking from a defensive line standpoint, man. I was so proud of that guy. When they talk about the 2005 Grey Cup, there's a list of things you can go down and talk about. Do you talk about the offense? Do you talk yes. about some defensive plays? Do you talk about the fact it went into overtime? Do you talk about the fact that it was Sean Fleming kicking a field goal in overtime, as somebody suggested? <laughs> or do you talk about Ricky Ray? He's a guy that took this offense to the Grey Cup championship. But remember, in two playoff games, he was replaced by Jason Moss but not in the biggest game of the year. And with more on that, here's Craig McEwen. Touchdown, Eskimos! In football, it's not always who starts, but who finishes a game that really matters. And after two straight weeks of giving way to his backup, Ricky Ray went all the way in the Grey Cup, bringing home his second CFL championship in just three CFL seasons. I felt good all, all day long today. I felt that we went out and played our game. Uh, the Great Cup was ours, and, and even when they came back, I, I felt like we were going to go down there and make the plays to win it. The guy's an awesome quarterback. I mean, he was in a rut, but it wasn't only him. It was collectively, we were all in a rut. Yeah, that's, that includes me that's calling the plays down there. And, and I made them understand that, that throughout the course of uh, the last month, that we're all in this together, and no one's going to take a fall here. And ultimately, we'll win together and we'll lose together. And uh, I think he appreciated that. And uh, the support that he got from his teammates uh, speaks for itself. We knew he would do it. We believed in him. And we just said, hey, just keep fighting for Ricky. Ricky is a great quarterback. People want to talk, criticize everything that he does. But Ricky Ray has been in this league three years. He's been in three great cups. And here he is with two great cup championship rings under his belt. If the rumors are true, Ray will be losing his good buddy Jason Moss to Hamilton this offseason, a move many Eskimo fans were worried about before this weekend. But actions on the field always speak louder than words, and proving his critics wrong has been a trademark of Ray's prolific career. I don't think I've ever wanted anybody in my life to do that well. Um, you know, I didn't want to see him have to go through an off-season of questions or anything like that. I think this is just some, it is some great vindication, but it's also a great culminating, culmination to the whole year. And I'm happy he went through some adversity there at the end because he's going to be a better player for it. Um, that's what I've tried to reiterate to him all week. Well, Jason just, you know, he had confidence in me um, through all of this. And, and he's a great friend of mine. And, uh, you know, it, it's just a great feeling because we wouldn't be here without him. And for him to still believe in me and, and uh, always staying positive with me it just shows how much of a good teammate he is. Besides acknowledging Jason Moss, Ricky Ray also thanked his head coach, Danny Machocha. It's been a difficult few weeks for everyone involved in the QB carousel. But at the end of the day, the Eskimos and Ray are the big winners. Craig McEwen, Sportsnet, Vancouver. Earlier in Grey Cup week, Eric, I asked you if there was a quarterback controversy at Edmonton. I guess that question has been answered. <laughs> I think a resounding no to that. In fact, what the Edmonton Eskimos are guilty of is doing a great job in scouting, bringing in two quality quarterbacks. The fact that they can win with Jason Moss, the fact that they can win with Ricky Ray, that's a testament to Paul Jones and his scouting system. For years and years, when you were here, Neil, Ray Newman behind the mm -hmm. scenes did a great job of bringing in the Warren Moons, the great quarterbacks. It's part of the legacy and tradition at Edmonton, and it continued this week. Well, it's not only bringing in good talent and bringing in good quarterbacks. It's bringing in quarterbacks that can play in a system that they're designed. That's what they come in to do. They don't just great bring great players. As Hugh Campbell would say, they bring great players who are going to be great Eskimos. And I think this today was a perfect example of that. I mean, that third down throw that he made to Mitchell was just, I mean, it was it was a perfect pass. And, and even thinking about the way this game went, the special teams, uh, the return for a touchdown. And let's give that Eskimo defense yes. some real credit because what they did on a non-pressure situation drop back in coverage got pressure on Anthony Cavill sometimes with just three guys sometimes with four so what they did is their game plan and, and that goes to the coaches right coaches draw it up the players executed and the players executed really on both sides very well but Edmonton's got the edge today and you know what the key thing too is, is that Neil Lumsden has been incredibly modest with the fact that he picked Edmonton to win <laughs> in overtime on a Fleming field goal you yeah. are a thing and, of beauty and but the mvp and the mvp <laughs> and he could not pick though the winning 50 50 ticket so it was it wasn't a clean sweep it has been a terrific week yes, in vancouver the edmonton eskimos are 2005 Grey cup champions
with an MVP performance. For the second time in three years, the Edmonton Eskimos are Grey Cup champions. Hi, everyone. Welcome to BC Play Stadium. James Sabolski, along with the scores football analyst, Dwayne Ford and Milton Stiegel. Guys, everybody always talks about how exciting Grey Cups are year after year after year. This one, though, just might be one of the most exciting in recent memory. Well, and it didn't disappoint. When you look at the way that we, we foresaw this game unfolding, it was fantastic. Two teams very evenly matched. Nobody had any idea who was going to win. The one thing that all the so-called experts said leading up to this game was that it was going to be close. And I think for me, the thing that, that stood out in this game was the coaching chess match. I think you look at Edmonton, just a perfect game plan. That's something that got them off to a very good start in the first half, staked them to a lead. And then the adjustments that Montreal made in the third quarter that allowed them to get back into the game, not just a great, great game played by two very good football teams, but well coached by two outstanding head coaches in Danny Matrocha and Don Matthews. Yeah, it, it was definitely a great game, but I think the thing that stood out most for me was the fact that uh, each team was able to answer the other team. There would be a big play or a touchdown by one team, and they would get mo momentum, and the other team would be able to get that momentum back. So that showed a lot of character. It was just unfortunate that one team had to win. And I, th I think the fans would agree that they would like to have this game keep going on forever because it was a great game. Oh, it really became a game of almost anything you can do, I can do better. And you know what? Leading into this week, there was so much talk about the quarterback controversy. Jason Moss, Ricky Ray, who's going to get the call at quarterback? D you know, Jason Moss maybe deserves it considering the way he had finished up in the two playoff games against Calgary, against BC. But it was Ricky Ray who was the man on this day. He was the outstanding player of the game, and he's standing by with our own Sarah Orleski. I'm joined now by Ricky Ray of the Grey Cup winning Edmonton Eskimos. How sweet was this win tonight? Man, it's, it's awesome. Uh, the, the things that we went through together this year as a team, it's been kind of a roller coaster ride, and for us to all stick together and get it done, uh, just makes it that much more special. How great of a night was it for you? There's a lot of questions around, swirling around this week, but you came through, you were able to put it in the end zone, something that you hadn't been able to do for a while. Yeah, you know, that's just uh, believing in yourself, um, having your teammates believe in you and trust you, and um, just to go out there and, and give it your all and, and try and step up to the challenge. How did you feel heading into that overtime? I felt very good. I felt very confident all day long. And, you know, even when we got down and, and when they scored first in overtime, um, you know, I knew it was our night. Uh, and we were able to go out and respond and make the plays. When did you feel momentum switch? I mean, at that second half, it seemed to go back and forth between you guys. Yeah. What was the turning point? Well, I mean, you know, the two turnovers we had there um, in the second half, um, you know, they were able to capitalize on it. And then uh, for us to respond with, with Tony Tompkins returning that um, to get us the lead right back, I think that was probably where we recaptured the momentum. You've won a great cup before, but is this one of the greatest moments in your pro career? Oh, it definitely is. Um, you know, just, just the things that this team and, and what I've gone through the last month or so, and uh, for us to, to finish in third, win two road games, and then come here and be the underdog and, and play in a an exciting game tonight and come out with it just makes a, a great feeling and a, a great team victory. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Ricky Ray of the Edmonton Eskimos. All right. Thanks very much for that, Sarah. Now, Ricky Ray, I mean, this guy's confidence probably wasn't at exactly 100% coming into this one, having been relieved in two previous playoff games. But when it was time to step up in the biggest game of the year, he certainly did just that. He did a great job today. And the thing I think he did so well today was the fact that he took what the defense gave him. He didn't try to uh, do too much. He threw the ball down the field when he had to for the most part, he nickel and dimed him, and he did a great job today and displayed it with the MVP award. 359 yards passing, and this guy sets a completion record in the Grey Cup. Well, people worried down the stretch about whether Ricky Ray would still be the same football player. Anybody who's watched this guy play over the last few years has to realize that given time, he was going to break out of that slump, and he sure chose the right time to do it. Two Grey Cup victories under his belt now as a starter in Edmonton. How about Danny Machocha at 38 years of age, a rookie head coach, was certainly on the hot seat at many times throughout this season. He even said he avoided going to the gas station at times. Had his wife go to the gas station instead to fill up so he wouldn't hear any of the heckling from the fans in the city of champions. Well, Danny Machocha is a champion in his first year as a head coach in the Canadian Football League. I just got to pinch myself because that, that was a wild one. Probably, um, I'm sure they're going to play that one over a few times when they have uh, the classics. No one ever got down. There were no fingers that were being pointed. The support that we showed for one another, that's something that I'm going to ch cherish. And I just hope I get the opportunity uh, to, run, to surround myself with the same 
in the same kind of environment uh, for, you know, during this uh, the, this uh, this career that I've chosen. A tie game going into overtime for us was 0-0. You know, we knew we were better than them. It's just a matter of proving it. For all those that didn't believe we could get it done, you know, we're not being cocky here. We we truly indeed believe that we could win the championship when no one else believed it. And this one right here is for the guys in this locker room. Every guy on this roster is a, is a character guy. And, and uh, you know, we've played all year uh, through adversity. We've played ahead. We've played b behind. And, uh, you know, it just shows the character, you know, Ricky, uh, Ricky and Jason uh, dealing with that whole thing and playing through it and, and Jason being as supportive as he is. And, uh, you know, my, I tip the hat to, to all these guys on the team, all 54 of them. Mike Maurer, the outstanding Canadian in this one and a guy that you probably don't expect to hear his name called out throughout the season and stuff like that. But he winds up being the top Canuck. Why, Forty? Well, not just because he's a fullback, but because he did a terrific job today in a lot of different roles. Asked to block off the edge in their sprint passing game. They did a lot of rollout stuff today, and he did a nice job in that. Catching some passes in the flat as a receiver. But the other thing you have to bear in mind about Mike Maurer is that he's a guy that with the injury to Mathieu Bertrand, he was asked to step in and play most of the downs at fullback today, which is something he hasn't always had to do all year, and he filled in admirably. I'm thinking as a receiver, this would have been, you must have been licking your chops watching this one. I mean, almost over 700 yards passing in this one out there. Oh, it was a receiver's heaven. Uh, the fact that neither one of the teams ran the ball today much, the receivers were very involved. And we were dealing with six receivers who had over 1,000 yards today. So you knew they were going to be on display today, and they came out and did a great job. Uh, Stala, Cahoon for uh, Montreal, Tucker, Hervey, Mitchell for Edmonton. They came out and did a great job. Like I said, it was just unfortunate that one team had to win and it had to be Edmonton, and you got to give some credit to them because they made the plays when they had to. Well, for the fourth time since 2000, the Montreal Alouettes were in the Grey Cup, but they've only come away with one victory thus far. Let's hear from Al's quarterback, Anthony Calvillo. We knew it was going to be a tight game, and I, we felt, you know, the team that made the least amount of mistakes was going to walk away with this victory, and I think we made more mistakes than them, and it came back to cost us. It's pretty devastating, especially when we got a victory right there in our hands, and we uh, just seemed to let it slip away. It's, I mean, overtime, we need a field goal to tie, and we start going backwards. I mean, that's not easy. <laughs> What do you do? I thought uh, I thought we played well overall. It's, you know, they played a good game too. They they stuck in. They hung in there. Ricky threw up. He took a lot of hits today. And I just think it was a great ball game. Everybody played well. So, you know, yeah, we're disappointed that we lost, but uh, you know, you can't be disappointed the way we played. You know, I'm very disappointed what happened in the final result of the game. Um, I mean, uh, we're just gonna have to, you know, prepare in the offseason again, and uh, you know, hopefully be back here next year. Milton, 361 yards passing for AC. He certainly gave his team every opportunity to win this one. Yeah, he, he did a great job today. He was kind of stagnant in the first half, but he came out in the second half putting up big numbers, putting his team a great opportunity to, to win the game. It was unfortunate that they didn't, but he definitely had a big game for his team today. So why in the end does Montreal fail to deliver in another great cup? Well, I think the first thing is the start. In the first half, I think Edmonton had a game plan that confused them a little bit on both sides of the ball, did some things to keep them off balance. So Montreal fell behind a little bit early. Now, they rebounded well in the second half. Down the stretch, all I can say is they ran out of tricks before the Edmonton Eskimos did. Guys, I must say, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you both this week, and uh, love to have you working with us again in 06, but you got a great cup to win in Winnipeg. Yeah, right? I'll be in the Grey Cup next year. Uh, any team in the West, if you want to go to the Grey Cup, you better cross over to the East, because Milt Stiegel will be in the Grey Cup next year, and I'll win it. Thank B you. Bundle up, Forty. It's going to be cold out there. <laughs> yeah, we got spoiled a little bit this year inside the Dome, but tell you what, we'll go all the way to the peg to see our buddy here win uh, one. Absolutely. For the 94th Grey Cup in the city of Winnipeg in 2006 in the city of Vancouver did an awesome job celebrating the 93rd Grey Cup here in Vancouver. For Milton Stiegel and Dwayne Ford, I'm James Sabolski signing off in Vancouver. At this time we are joined by, not bad for a rookie, Danny Machocha, rookie head coach and uh, boy his first year as a head man and you talk about the roller coaster year you had. I mean, to come out with a great cup win, I guess there's a few critics that might be eating humble pie right about now. Well, uh, I mean, that football game was pretty much a resume of the season itself. I mean, it started well, then the middle third didn't go as well. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the the last third, I mean, it was like every single week, week in and week out, and went to the last couple of minutes. And uh, I mean, that's a true reflection of what we just lived here uh, this evening in, uh, in, in Vancouver. Of, uh, of the season that uh, you know that we had to contend with. Uh, Danny, it seems like even down the stretch, even a guy who had been through this a thousand times, his nerves would be tested. Were you nervous at all coming down the stretch of that game, or were you just kind of in a zone and just doing what you do all year? I tried to I tried to lock or block myself 
you know, uh, from all the distractions going on around me. And I need to do that because every once in a while, especially when you take the field and you go up against guys like Coach Higgins, Coach Borno, and Coach Matthews, if you get caught up in the moment, then by the time you snap out of it, the game may be over. So, I mean, you just try to stay focused at hand. And, um, and for the most part, I, uh, I thought I'd...